are here to talk about Imperium is a is a little bit of a departure for probably you and as your first big feature film mm -hmm. uh, a, a big leap to make as mm -hmm. a writer director it's based as you guys heard about on the experiences of a real life FBI agent who went undercover who you had as your co-writer Mike German so how did you even get to meet this guy to have him and convince him to make a movie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had actually made a short film about uh, Fritz Haber, who was the German chemist who invented chemical weapons during World War I. And that research on World War I had led me to an interest in World War II and the Nazis. And while I was researching that, I sort of stumbled upon the neo-Nazi community in the United States um, and was immediately sort of stunned by the size, the, the depth, the breadth of, of the entire white supremacist movement in this country. Um, so I became really interested in that, and I was sort of looking for a way into it, and I became aware of, of, of Mike German. Uh, and immediately that mechanism, sort of seeing it through the eyes of an FBI undercover agent, seemed to me to be a really good and effective way of sort of getting inside. Uh, so I contacted Mike. Um, we decided early on not to use his actual story, but to create a modern, fictionalized version of it that would nonetheless draw on all of his experiences, um, sort of try to recreate that experience, both of being an undercover agent and of being in that community uh, as realistically as possible. For either of you, as you were making the film and especially as you're creating these sort of shaded mm -hmm. portraits of some of the members of this community, were you fearful that the film could be taken the wrong way, misconstrued? Um, not particularly, because like, if anyone asked me, I'd say no. It's there's a very like you yeah. know you know you know what I mean. I think what the film does is recognise that these people are human beings, yeah. um, and that and that you know in order for you know a lot of these films sort of tend to preach to the choir. Now, if s there there might be some white supremacists that go and see this movie and see it to hate watch it because they know that I'm Jewish or whatever you know that like. You know they, and but but if any of them go in, and if even like, you know, if one mind is changed because of that, that's fantastic. And I think that this film maybe has a chance of doing that because it recognizes them as human beings first and foremost. Yes, they're human beings with beliefs that are horrible to me, but they are still human beings, and we have to like maintain our belief that those that a certain percentage of those minds can be changed. And I think that. If you start off a conversation with somebody by saying you are less than me, or like you, you know you are, you are evil inherently, then of course they're never going to engage enough with you for you to actually change their mind. Um, so as you know, as hard as it is, and as horrible and counterintuitive as it is, we will, uh, you know, if if you hope to change people's minds, you you can't write off their humanity. You also had to take uh, a, a, a kind of a risk for an actor. In this film, you had to shave your head on screen. <clears throat> yes, that which was mu must have been what a little bit terrifying. Yeah, it was a bit. It was just just because you know I've never i done it before, so I don't know what my head looks like underneath my hair. <laughs> um, and um, fortunately, it was okay. And um, I think you know I did I did most of it in the scene, and then we got Fernando our hairdresser to give it a little. Kind of yeah, it up. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then but then like a few crew members came out in support and did it too, including our DOP Bobby, who yeah. did well. Had first of all he he shaved everything apart from like. But he had really long hair before he yeah. shaved it, and then he just left this middle Mohican the, thing, the Mohawk, for yeah. a long time, and then eventually got rid of that as well. But yeah, it was. I, I actually, were it not for the um, the the ideological associations that that haircut has now for me, it's, I, I really enjoyed having it. But I, 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 I don't, I, I don't think I'll be going back to it all the time. Only for Imperium too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be? <laughs> and, but you did also have to say a lot of really vile stuff and yeah. kind of indulge in some vile behavior. Did you as a, as a person, as a performer, have to kind of psych yourself up to go to talk, about, to talk yeah, that way? a little bit, yeah. I mean, it, it is hor it's horrible. Um, I mean, there was, a, there was a scene I was doing with a, with a uh, Hispanic actor who I was going up to him after every take and being like, I'm so sorry, I'm <laughs> so sorry. And it, and it is, because um, it is not 
fun to say that stuff even when you're acting like it's re it's one of the few things that still just feels awful um, and normally there's I'm, I find it very easy to separate you know what's going on in the scene from life you know and it is but it, it with stuff like that you just the intensity of it is so real um, for, for both of you in that moment that you just have to like keep checking in and being like hey man I'm really sorry um, but yeah no so it, it, it is it does it does um, definitely take an effect and it's and it's also why like making a film with Dan who I get on with incredibly well and and you know and and having that sort of relationship and the crew were wonderful and it's you know you really need that on films like this you know it can't you can't live at that level of intensity and bleakness all the time you do need to be able to like step off set and, and just talk about something else and have a laugh about something completely separate from what you're doing. So was it a hard project to kind of, or a hard character to shake off? No, I don't think it was. It, it was, I was, I shook it off with some um, joy, I think. You know, not to, it, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't worry, I won't, I won't take it personally. Like, <laughs> just in the same way that you enjoyed yeah. not having to read yeah. neo-Nazi literature. Yeah, <laughs> right. I enjoyed, exactly. like, you know. That was, was a relief, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. it's, um, it's, yeah. there, there is, um, you know, I, I think the film as a whole and the the uh, the issues the film brings up were of a concern to me before we started making the film, during and have remained so after. But I don't think the character in itself was something that I, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't getting up feeling like aggressive and horrible in in that mindset all the time. Um, which it is is that does sometimes happen with stuff. But like like with with Equus doing Equus for a long time, I remember going to, like that that sort of takes you to a very sort of bleak place as well, sort of sometimes. But but no, with this one it was um, it was thankfully easier to to just move on. And for you, you've been with the project for many years, right? To to what yes, was, I haven't what moved on quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's been uh, what about three three and a half years. Um, so yeah, you have to. I mean, I say this all the time, even when I you know talk to people about other projects. It's like you, re it's a marriage. You know, you 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 really have to commit to something, and you have to get into bed with it and live with it for quite some time. And and. And uh, just like a marriage and just like a relationship, there are highs, there are lows, there's a honeymoon, then there's a, like, what the hell am I doing? There's, there's all of those things, you know? So, so you have to find things on it that are both interesting on a variety of levels and that are going to continue to sustain you. Um, and I think you also have to find things that are continually challenging. The other thing that I always say is it's like you want to find a project that maybe you're only like 80% capable of doing, something that you can grow into a little bit, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, over the course of three years, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna tire of it, you know? I think that's actually great. I've never thought of it that way, but yeah, I think that's a great way. I think fear is a very um, motivating uh, force and, and the fear of failure and the fear, like I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know how to dance when I had completely agreed to do a Broadway musical. So like, <laughs> there's, there's nothing that will teach you to dance, like just saying, yeah, okay, I'll do that musical in a year and I'll just learn in the meantime. Like, you know, that's, and I do think there's, 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 there is something to that. Well, we've been uh, joking a little bit about how dark this movie is, uh, but of course, Harry Potter has a lot of dark elements, especially towards, towards the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to ask, were you a Potter fan? <laughs> I, I don't know what's the correct <laughs> answer to this. Yeah, I don't know. I, so honestly, I was not familiar with Harry Potter. I know that's, that's blasphemy in many circles. I did go through a week at one point where I watched all the movies because it was on the verge. I think it was the last one had just come out and I was like, okay, well, I, I can't just like, I have to watch these movies. And the, and the last ones were getting great reviews and I watched them and I, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed them when I did. And, and to me, there was a lot of metaphors in those movies. Maybe I'm yeah. reading them wrong, no, incorrectly no, no, no. about fascism not, and the Nazis and, yep. and all the rest of it. Absolutely. You know? and, and, and to me, I always say that too about about the Nazis and about that era. I mean, you look at that. You look at Star Wars. I mean, that the the, the Nazis have become this sort of very yeah. common reference point in all of our cultural representations of evil. Were you taking in the the films that way when you were making them as this yeah. sort of broad good and evil story? Yes, absolutely. And I think that they they definitely. Um, you know, particularly with the, the sort of the idea of, you know, pure races and things like that, there is a lot in, in Potter that's directly uh, analogous to this stuff. That's what's great about them is that they, they work in that same way, that they're, you know, they are not didactic political films, but they do, you know, they will still inform people um, in, in a certain way of just about these ideas of good and evil and the notion that acceptance of everybody is, is inherently good.